Ladies and gentlemen, new patch, new maps, new patch, new maps, new patch, new maps, new maps, new patch. Here are the new maps. I'm going to go through these one at a time so you know which of them to veto or play different on. Site Delta, pretty normal map. This was in there last season. You kind of know what you're dealing with. Pretty balanced map. Dynasty. I only got to play one map or one match on this map so far. My opponent went for three bases and never took a fourth by utilizing this gold base here and then going mass void rays with speed after a tempest opening. So this map seems really good for air, especially for Protoss if you're playing here. Uh, for Zerg, having a safety spire is good against tempest kind of stuff. And the reason this void ray speed build is so strong is because they can pressure if you take this gold or they can pressure if you take this base. So I expanded one, two, three, four, and tried a gold fifth. Didn't end up working. I didn't uh, make enough vipers to deal with the mass void ray, but I feel like expanding on this map, you can go main, natural, third, fourth. The reason this is a tricky base for Zerg to take early specifically is because they can just park a couple adepts over here and deny mining at this base. So the gold base, I feel like, is a question mark of can you make it work or not? I haven't played enough matches on this map to really have a sense of that, but make of this map what you will. Oceanborn, it was in last season, pretty normal map. Ghost River, this is a newer one. It feels a little bit like Equilibrium in that you're both in the upper spot and you have a lot of real estate down south to work with. I did face a Tempest build on this map as well. So a lot of people are thinking about the short air rush and trying to use that to their advantage. ZVZ, I played a match here, felt pretty normal. Uh, ZVT, I didn't play on this one yet, so just versus Protoss. This map seems fine. This one has a unique feature of a healing pad right here. So if you put units on this when they're hurt, they'll heal up to full. That, like, just, I'm thinking about it, seems really good for Protoss doing Oracle Harass. They can go in and harass and then heal them up to full after they get hit by the Queens. But, yeah, try to use this if you can. To me, this seems like less of a big deal for Zerg because our units tend to be lower HP and killed anyway. But we'll see what happens on Ghost River. Amphion is pretty interesting. You've got a bunch of mineral patches to mine through on this map. There's gold patches here that you can mine through. These might be just blue patches. I faced a Protoss who was preventing me from mining through this by having adepts on a prism. And they would just drop the adepts and kill the drones. And my queens couldn't really stop that. So. Getting through here as a Zerg for like a third or a fourth is pretty tough. Uh, once again, another short rush by air map, so watch out for Tempest builds, Void Ray builds, things like that. Uh, it seems like a decent map for mech because you've got lots of rocks and map features and that kind of a thing. But because the map is so wide, there's so much stuff going on over here, I've actually had pretty good success with mass ling styles. Because you have this option to expand this way, I've been able to bust in people's natural expansion quite a bit because their focus ends up being here if they take a third base here. Almost every Terran or Protoss I've faced on this map expands for the triangle third instead of the line third. Line third is low ground, so I guess they don't like that. And if you did take this low ground third, say you're the Zerg, you go one, two, three. They could set up tanks here, so I feel like if you're expanding this way, uh, you should probably continue that and take this far corner base and then make your objective to creep here. Because if this base is creeped, then these two bases are pretty safe. So you just need to cover this side of yourself with spores, shove creep kind of up this way on the map. And you can also creep over these uh, mineral patches if you get an opportunity. But overall, not too crazy of a map. This map is probably the weirdest because it has like triple thick rocks right here, 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 and here. So there are like six rocks at each of these, two wide, three deep. It's just so many rocks. I have no idea why, but that does make this map kind of tricky for playing melee styles because you can't realistically break these rocks. It just takes way too much time. It's like, what is your opponent doing for that 10 minutes that you're trying to kill these rocks? So Ling styles, melee styles, I would say are probably not as good just because it's really hard to set up a surround when you would have to run all the way around the map to get a flank before you've killed the rocks. The way I've played this so far today is I've actually gone from my main 
to a natural here to a forward third. And this might seem risky, but you actually have a lot of trees and stuff back here, so they can't really harass your mineral line from the low ground. It's just too far away. And then you have a high ground here, and then you have an obstacle here. So this third base is actually, aside from being close to your opponent, it's relatively safe. So I took this space and then I went for like a roach queen push into a roach hydra push. So kind of aggressive. I ended up having fewer drones. So if I could recommend a strat, you could just go for this space as a third. This has a rich gas geyser, but only one of them. And you could go for maybe 60 drones and then make a huge army of stuff and try to bash their third. That worked for me so far anyway. I would think in the late game, rather than going ultras and trying to chomp through these rocks, going for heavy lurker styles. Because lurkers can deal AoE, like their spine shoot up, <laughs> and they hit everything along the way, which means they would hit all the rocks in these clumps. I haven't tested this yet, but that's a style that I want to try. If I get into the late game against Protoss, Terran, or even Zerg, this seems like a relatively good lurker map. And you can just use as a general guideline for yourself. The more rocks there are in a map, the worse it is for lings and the better it is for lurkers just because of how those units interact with rocks. And also uh, the upgrades, they do kind of commit you to one or the other, it feels like, unless you just go double attack upgrades, which is valid. So this is a, they call it a four level freestyle map. It's a weird one. You have an in-base natural here that has half gold. It has some gold patches and some blue patches. I've been playing this one, uh, honestly, gas pool hatch in ZVZ just because a lot of Zergs are cheesing it right now. But if you don't cheese the map, trying to saturate these gold patches as soon as your natural is done gives you a pretty nice mineral boost. I've been expanding second base here, third base here, fourth base here, I think is my rough pattern. And then you could take a fifth here or here depending on which side of the map you feel like you have more control over. But this map doesn't seem super weird. I think there is a gold base here, but this base is really hard to defend. Yeah, there are a couple gold bases here. I tried to take these bases against Pig playing Terran, and they're really, really difficult to hold just because they're on a precarious forward spot on the map. So I think one, two, three, four, five is probably the safest expansion pattern. If you're gonna expand one, two, three, you could maybe do like a roach all in. You would just need to make sure that you have an overwhelming number of army units to protect this base. But if you wanted to just veto the maps that kind of feel bad for uh, facing turtling players, I would probably do this. Mm. I'm trying to think of the third turtliest map. To be honest, Oceanborn, kind of tough to break mech. Nah, this one, this fucking one. Okay, so if you want to veto the turtle maps, you could do these vetoes. I don't normally veto maps. Today I was vetoing some of the old maps just so I could get more like practice on the newer ones. Alcyone is also kind of a wonky one for Zerg versus Terran. But yeah, this is a quick breakdown of the maps. They don't seem particularly bad for Zerg, I feel like it's a fine patch for Zerg. Doesn't feel like things are much worse or much better. Pretty normal gaming. But best of luck to you, and I hope the map breakdown saved you maybe a couple losses. Appreciate you.